Welcome to the Cryptic Escape Podcast. We supply your fix for all things science fiction, fantasy, and horror. I am Cameron, your holographic artificial intelligence program to guide you through the dimensions of wonder, thought, and imagination. Today's adventure is the first four episodes of The Adventures of Superman. Truly a character forever cemented in American culture for all time. In the early days of the hero's adventure, though, he had a serial that came to radio as a syndicated show on New York City's WOR on February 12, 1940. On Mutual, it was broadcast from August 31, 1942, to February 4, 1949, as a 15-minute serial, running three or, usually, five times a week. From February 7 to June 24, 1949, it ran as a thrice-weekly half-hour show. The series shifted to ABC Saturday evenings on October 29, 1949, and then returned to afternoons, twice a week on June 5, 1950, continuing on ABC until March 1, 1951. In all, 2,088 original episodes of The Adventures of Superman were aired on American radio. For today, we have the first broadcast of The Baby from Krypton, Clark Kent mild-mannered reporter, Keno's landslide, and Clark Kent captured by the wolf. The Baby from Krypton originally aired on February 12, 1940. Boys and girls, your attention, please. Presenting a new exciting radio program featuring the thrilling adventures of an amazing and incredible personality. Faster than an airplane, more powerful than a locomotive, impervious to bullets. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! And now, Superman. A being no larger than an ordinary man, but possessed of powers and abilities never before realized on Earth. Able to leap into the air an eighth of a mile at a single bound. Hurdle a 20-story building with ease. Race a high-powered bullet to its target. Lift tremendous weights and rend solid steel in his bare hands as though it were paper. Superman. A strange visitor from a distant planet. Champion of the oppressed. Physical marvel extraordinary who has sworn to devote his existence on Earth to helping those in need. As our story begins, we ask you to come with us on a far journey, a journey that takes us millions of miles from the Earth, where the planet Krypton burns like a green star in the endless heavens. Here, civilization is far advanced. It has brought forth a race of supermen, men and women like ourselves, but advanced to the absolute peak of human perfection. As we near Krypton, we see high walls and gleaming turrets. We approach the magnificent Temple of Wisdom. And there in a great hall, Jor-El, Krypton's foremost man of science, is about to address a meeting of the planet's governing council. Attention! Attention, gentlemen! Jor-El speaks. Members of the council, I have completed my solar calculations. And much as I dread uttering these words, I have come to the conclusion, Krypton is doomed. Did I hear him right? Gentlemen! Gentlemen! Gentlemen, hear him out. These internal quakes we've been experiencing, these volcanic eruptions, tidal waves, gas escaping from giant craters, all point to only one thing, gentlemen. Krypton is utterly... And finally, doom. By the man's man, yes, absolutely. One moment, gentlemen. One moment. There is no cause for anxiety. I am certain Jonel has made a mistake. True, we have had a few minor quakes and eruptions, but nothing very serious. There must be some error in your calculations, Jonel. No, no, there is no error, Rosanne. I only wish there were. The sun is gradually drawing Krypton closer to it. Within a month, Possibly only a week. The gravitational pull will be so tremendous that Krypton will not be able to weather the strain. And then, then our planet will explode like a giant bubble, destroying every living thing on it. <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> assuming for the moment, jor that what you say is true, how are we to avoid it? What can we do to stop it? There is only one way. As you all know, I have been working on a spaceship designed for interplanetary travel. With time and united effort, 
we might transport the entire population of Krypton to another world. Impossible. Where would we go? To the Earth. My studies tell me the atmosphere of the Earth is very nearly the same as our own. You have been working too hard, Jonathan. You need a rest. Believe me, we have the utmost respect for your knowledge and integrity. But this is carrying it too far. Planets as large as Krypton do not explode, Jonathan. Wait! Do you hear that, gentlemen? It's the forewarning of doom. Every moment is precious now. Quakes like that are sounding the death knell of Krypton. It will happen, gentlemen, and happen soon. When the last great eruption comes... When it comes, jor it shall find all of us ready. If Krypton is to die, we shall die with it. The parting would be much too severe. <laughs> Very well. Glad of you like, Roseanne. And you, members of the council, I have no time to laugh. My wife, Lara, and my infant son are dear to me. It is not my wish to stand by and see them destroyed. Laugh, all of you. But a time will come, and that time is perhaps very close at hand, when you will wish you had heeded the words of jor -El. Now you think me a fool, but remember what I have said, gentlemen, when Krypton is shattered into a thousand million stars, when the glorious civilization we have built is no more, when you and your families are swept from the face of Krypton like dust! <laughs> <laughs> Order, gentlemen! Order! You have heard jor speak. Is it your wish that we devote time and money to the building of spaceships? for the transportation of Krypton's population to another planet? No, oh, no, 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 no! I am sorry, jor -El. The Council has spoken. Yes, and signed the death warrants of every living thing on Krypton. Well, I have done my best to convince you. Now all that remains for me is to proceed with my own means of salvation, my own spaceship, to save the lives of those near and dear to me. As for the rest of you, may the gods have mercy on your souls. Your well, is mad. He is absolutely mad. Ah, Lara, I didn't see you. I came out to take the air on the terrace. It's been terribly hot all day. Is that because we're being drawn to the sun, Jarrell? Yes. What did the council have to say about that? I... I didn't mention it. Is the model of your spaceship almost finished? Yes, yes, I just drove the last rivet. How does it look? Splendid. But will it work? Ah, that remains to be seen. If it does work, I shall immediately begin construction of another just like it, only much larger. One big enough to carry all three of us to another world. jor when will that be? Every moment that we spend waiting and wondering... Yes, I know, I know, Lara. It's been hard on all of us, and particularly hard on you. How is the boy? Sleeping, jor -El. That quake this afternoon frightened him, but he's all right now. Can't you come in and look at him? You scarcely see him these days, what with working all hours on the spaceship model. It can't be helped, dear. I'm racing against time. Right now, I'm anxious to know whether the model will behave as I hope. How does it operate? Oh, very simply. When all is ready, I throw this switch. That closes the circuit, and electric energy builds up pressure in the atomic generators. Then, at the final moment, the pressure forces the ship from its carrier and speeds it on its way. But where does it go? Wherever it's pointed. This one I'm directing to the planet Earth. Earth? What is that, Jerem? A planet smaller than our own, situated on the other side of the sun. It's inhabited by a race of people similar to ourselves. Like ourselves? Well, only partly, of course, my dear. They're about the same size, but nowhere nearly as developed. Very weak and helpless, and, and with all their faculties extremely limited. How do you mean? But it's something like this. You know how far you step when you want to go somewhere? Practically as far as I want. Why, one step takes me to Brata's house near the fountain. Exactly. Well, down where I'm sending this spaceship, it's quite different. An Earth man steps only three feet at a time at most, and everything else is in proportion. And that's where we're going? Oh, how dreadful. My dear, which would you rather do, go to Earth and live, or stay on Krypton and die? I'll do anything you say, Jarell, anything. It doesn't matter to me whether we live or die as long as we're together. It's only the boy I worry about. Yes, I know. Oh, Lara, darling, don't worry. He'll be saved. When are you testing the spaceship model? In the morning. Just as dawn breaks, I'll send it on its way. 
watching its flight through a high-powered telescope to see whether it lands safely on Earth. Is Earth the only planet place we can go to, jor We couldn't breathe on any other planet but the Earth. It happens to have an atmosphere similar to Krypton's. I suppose you know best, jor Are you coming in? It, it seems to have gotten oppressively hot. Yes, it, it has, I wonder. Lara, do you hear that? Yes, jor What is it? Subterranean explosions. Do you feel the ground trembling? Yes, I do. jor do you think? Lara. Lara, I'm afraid it's come. Where is the boy, Kalel? What do you mean? Get him quickly. This is the end. Jarrell, what can we do? Nothing, nothing. I'm not ready. Oh, what a fool I've been to delay. It isn't your fault, Jarrell. You did all you could. If only this model were large enough, we could take a chance. Jarrell, would it carry one of us safely to Earth? Oh, I think so, but... Lara, where are you going? Stay here with me. I'm getting Kalel. If one of us can be saved, Jarrell, it should be the boy. No, no, Lara, come back. If one must go, it should be you. Lara, I said come back. Come back. Here he is, Jarrell, still asleep. Goodbye, Kalel. Please, Lara. No, Jarrell, listen to me. We both stay here. Kalel goes in the spaceship. If there is a chance, Jarrell, and one little chance I wanted for my son. Maybe you're right, Lara. Jarrell, look. The sky. It's fiery red. The mountains. Look, the mountains are falling in. Jarrell, what's happening? The end of Krypton, Lara. Just as I foretold. This is the last great quake. Jarrell, listen. Explosions. Here, quick, quick, give me the boy. Kellel. Kellel. What are you doing, Jarrell? Opening the door, putting him inside. Jarrell, the house, it's swaying. It's breaking apart. Look, Jarrell. There. There, he's safe inside. Now for the switch. Stand back, Lara. Oh, Jarrell, will he reach the earth? Only the gods know. But there's a chance, the only chance. Stand back now, Lara. I'm going to throw the switch. Jarrell, it's getting dark. I can't see. What happened? Fire. Smoke from the center of the planet. Not much time now. Hold me, Jarrell. Has the spaceship gone? No, no, not yet. Waiting for pressure. We may have been too late. If it doesn't work up soon, wait. Lara, it's off. It's on its way. Jarrell, where are you? Here, here beside you, Lara. Listen, can you hear me? Our boy, Kalel. Our son, Lara. He's on his way. On his way to Earth. Kalel! Kalel! So the tiny rocket ship roars into the uncharted heavens as the mighty planet of Krypton explodes into millions of glowing fragments, glittering stars to remain forever in the night sky. Jorel and Lara, devoted parents of the tiny boy, perish in the giant quake that destroys Krypton. But what of the rocket ship? Does it reach the Earth? Does it find its mark in all the far-flung darkness of space? Remember, don't miss the next installment of Superman. Up in the sky, look! It's a giant bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Clark Kent mild-mannered reported aired originally on February 14, 1940. Presenting Superman. Up in the sky. Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And now... Superman, eighth wonder of the modern world, visitor from a distant planet whose strength knows no limits, whose endurance is beyond anything humanity has ever known. We have seen how the child of jor and Lara was placed in the rocket ship and sent on his way to Earth. During the long journey of the rocket ship to the Earth, the child has become a man. The rocket landed in a desert. Superman stepped forth full-grown to explore this strange new world in which he found himself. Today, as our story continues we find him hovering with his curious power above a quiet highway in Indiana. A trolley car is just pulling up the hill, and as Superman wheels and turns in curious flight, unseen below, a man and a boy come out of the shed that serves as waiting room. Morning, Professor. Good morning. Going into town? Yes, that's right, John. Taking Jimmy to the fair. That is a great show, all right. Well, I reckon you're my only passengers. Uh, make yourselves at home. I'm going to get me a drink of water. All right. 
Why, Dad, we've got the trolley all to ourselves. Yeah, it's a regular private car. Hmm? Where'd the motorman go? Uh, just over to the spring for a drink. It's a mighty hot day. You'd better hurry or we'll be late. <laughs> we can't start without the motorman. But we are starting. Look, Dad, the doors have closed. We're moving. Yes, what happened? Dad, I want to get out. The brakes. Something happened to the brakes. Let's get out, quick. Open the doors. They're jammed. They're tight shut. Dad, we're going faster and faster. We're going downhill. Dad, what are we going to do? Jimmy, come here. The window. Out the window, Dad. Get it open. Smash it. Oh. Wait, wait. Jump, Dad. Jump. No, no, no. It's too late. Going too fast. We've got to, Dad. Look, there ahead, there's a tree. Jimmy. A tree. A tree's falling right in the tracks. Look. Look. There in the sky. It's a man. Why, he's flying. It can't be. It's not possible. Dad, he's coming straight at us. He's moving down. He's staring off the roof. Dad. Quick. Grab hold of me. No, put me down. Let me go. Stop it. One under each arm. Out through the top. Hold on. We're going to crash. Well, we just got out of that in time. The trolley car's a wreck. Smashed into a million pieces. Where are you going? What are you doing to us? Uh, what's happening? Put us down. Don't be frightened. You're all right. I had to get you out of there in a hurry. Pulling off that roof was the only way. Now we're going down again. Down. Down. There you are. Safe and sound in the field. Well, I, I don't know what to say. Quite all right, Professor. Getting you and the boy out of that car was nothing. Well, I can't believe it. Who are you, anyway? Where do you come from? I have no name. I come from a world that no longer exists. Here in this world of yours, men would call me a superman. It's a dream. A wild, impossible dream. But, Dad, it happened. We saw it. He flew down, took us under his arms. And out of the car, that's all. Nothing so strange about that. And you saved our lives, Jimmy's and mine. I don't understand even now, but I'm grateful. Are you, Professor? Well, do you doubt it? Would you do something to prove it? Would we? Anything at all. Then make me a promise. Promise that you'll say nothing at all about what's happened. What? Don't you want people to know? Not just yet. I want no one to know. Except those I help. Will you promise? Well, if you wish. I do. Believe me. Then you have our word. Is that all? No. You've given me your promise. Now I want your advice. You want advice from us? You know this world. I'm a stranger. You know the people in it. And I have still to find them out. You want to meet men, is that it? Not meet them, Professor. Observe them. Study them. See them at their best and their worst. Know which to help and when help is needed. If you can tell me that... Dad, can we help him? Well, I think so, Jimmy, if that's what he wants. It would mean a great deal to me. Well, my friend, if we can call you that... I hope we can. My first friends on this earth. To mingle with people, to see men at the highest and the lowest, if that's what you want... Uh, now, let me think. Uh, now how about a newspaper, a great metropolitan daily? A newspaper? Well, yes, join their staff. Be a reporter. Oh, but you can't do it in those clothes. Not that blue costume with the cloak and shield on your breast. Gee, you couldn't. Uh, Jimmy, these are the cloak and the shield of Superman. If I become as other men, I shall dress as other men. Well, you'll have to assume some kind of a name. Uh, what do they call you? I have no name. Well, how about... Clark Kent. That sounds all right. Yes, why not? It's usual enough. Won't attract attention. Clark Kent. Clark Kent. Yes. And about joining a newspaper. That should give me an opportunity to learn the troubles of men, to know whom to help and when help is needed. I'll do it. Many thanks to both of you for your advice. Well, no thanks are necessary. If there were only something more... Just this. Remember your promise. Never to reveal my identity. And now, goodbye. I've stayed too long, and I'm off. Goodbye. 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 They're right. Superman must become a reporter. A reporter by the name of Clark Kent. Clark Kent. I'll do it. Steady roll. Wait. Listen, Chief. You better get somebody in that railroad story right away. Anything break? Looks bad. I don't know where your dope came from, but it sure was right. Well, where are you now? At the yards out of town. If I were you, I'd have somebody watch the man they call the wolf. The wolf? That's what I do, Chief. Watch him. Trail him. Follow him every minute. He's at the bottom of this as sure as you're born. Oh, hey, I gotta beat it. Someone's coming. Oh. Excuse me, Mr. White. 
Young man's still waiting. What young man? Oh, the one who wants a job? Well, let him wait. Who have we got that's free? McCann's on the coast. Grayson's down in Virginia. Most of the day men are full up. I knew it. Confound it's always the way. Something breaks and nobody to handle it. What is it, Mr. White? Railroads. Sabotage. I didn't believe it, but there may be something in it after all. If there is... Yes, sir? If there is, Miss Smith, it'll be the biggest story since Lindbergh. And me short-handed. Oh, what's the use? Yes, sir. Uh, about that man. Oh, send him in. Send him in. Yes, sir. Come in, Mr. Kent. Mr. White will see you now. Thanks. You want to see me? Close that door. Yes, sir. My name is Kent. Clark Kent. What can I do for you, Mr. Kent? Well, Mr. White, you can give me work, I hope. Work? On the paper? Yes, sir. I'd like to be a reporter. Oh, you'd like to be a reporter. What papers have you worked on? Well, none, sir, but... Oh, I... you haven't. But you think you'd be a whiz. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I can't use you, Kent. You mean you haven't any openings? Not for greenhorns. I'm sorry if I'm blunt. But, Mr. White, even if I am a greenhorn, suppose I brought you a good story. And where would you get it? I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me, Mr. Kent. A I'm... really good story? Such as... Such as the complete inside on the man called the Wolf on the Western Railroads? Uh, uh, what's that? You heard me. Do you want that story? Do I want it? Well, I should say I do. But look I here. I think I could get it for you, Mr. White. What do you know about the Wolf? A little bit. Where did you ever hear his name? In connection with railroads, Mr. White. Oh, stop beating around the bush. I only heard the beginning of that myself yesterday morning. Not a paper in the country has carried a line. And yet... And yet I come in here and talk about it. I think I could do something with it, Mr. White. Now, look here, Kent. Mysterious secret messages have threatened to tie up every railroad in the country, beginning with the Western. For a while, the road paid no attention, and then the crack flyer on the P&R went off a bridge. Yes, I read about that. Yeah, naturally. But you didn't read about the warnings because they weren't printed. Weren't printed? No, and they won't be. Not until we've checked all the angles. And then this man, the wolf... Oh, yes, yes, the wolf. Now, where do you come in? How did you get to know the wolf? Oh, excuse me. Say your own, White. My friend, tomorrow night, the Silver Clipper leaves Denver for the West. It will not arrive in Salt Lake City. Hey, what's that? Who's this? I have been called the wolf. Goodbye. Hey, come back here. Come back here. Wait, wait. Yes, Mr. White? Where did that call come from? I'm sorry, sir. The party's been disconnected. Ah, nuts. I beg your pardon, sir, but if that call did come from the wolf, I should be inclined to believe it. Huh? How do you know who that was? If I were you, I'd warn the officials in charge of the silver clipper. Uh, look here. You couldn't hear that phone. What is this? How do you know who called me? As I was saying, Mr. White... Suppose I brought you a good story. The story of the Silver Clipper and the Wolf. I take chances, Kent. I'm going to take a chance on you. Thank you, Mr. White. It's 2,000 miles. You'll have to hop a plane. I'll get there, Mr. White, in spite of the weather. Lord, I, I hadn't noticed the weather. Well, get to the airport anyway. You rang, Mr. White? Miss Smith, this is Clark Kent, temporarily attached to our staff. You'll note I said temporarily. Yes, sir. Kent leaves for the west for the first plane. Get him tickets and a $200 advance. Mr. White, all planes are grounded. Well, that's all right, sir. I'll get there. Uh, take him outside. Show him what he needs to know. Mr. White, I'd like to thank you. Oh, let it go, Kent. Let it go. You get a story and you get a job. You're either clairvoyant or the luckiest guesser alive. Either way, I can use you. But if you miss out, well... This way, Mr. Kent. Thank you, Miss Smith. It's nice of you to show me around. Pretty lucky, I'll say. A hundred good newspaper men walking the streets and you step right into a job. I say, I am lucky. You wait in here. It's the ante room of the cashier's office. Well, I really don't need an advance. Oh, I... playboy in disguise, eh? Wait here. Oh, what a rotten night. Don't fall out that window. It's 20 stories down. Beautiful view, even in the fog. You wait right here till I get your money. Then I'll introduce you to a few real newspaper men. Planes grounded. 2,000 miles to go. Sorry, Miss Smith. I'm afraid I can't wait. Clark Kent may need a plane, but Superman doesn't. Up with the window. And out. Get out. I hope I didn't keep you waiting to... What? Miss Smith. Miss Smith. Oh, what's wrong? That man. Did he go out, that Clark Kent? Nobody went through the city room. No. He didn't go out. Well, I left him right here. The, the window. Oh, the open window. He went through it, and it's 20 stories down. How do you he went out through the window. window. Out the open window, 20 stories above the ground. In the wink of an eye, Clark Kent, cub reporter for the Daily Planet, becomes Superman, eagle of the sky, winging his way west over city and plain, river and mountain, through the storm-swept night. But will he be in time? Can he checkmate the strange figure called the wolf, discover the plot, save the silver clipper, roaring toward Denver at 90 miles an hour? And remember, don't miss the next installment... Of Superman. Up 
in the sky. Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Kino's Landslide was first aired on February 16, 1940. Presenting Superman. Up in the sky. Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And now, Superman. Amazing figure from another world with powers and abilities never before realized by mortal men. Given a chance to make good by Perry White, city editor of the Daily Planet, young Clark Kent, who was really Superman, leaped out a window 20 stories above the ground and vanished in a swirl of fog. Secret warnings had come to the newspaper of a vague and sinister plot against the railroads of the West. And mild-mannered Clark Kent had received orders to go west at once and investigate. Already danger is forming in the path of the Silver Clipper, cracked train of the West Coast Railroad, roaring over the prairie on her way to Denver and Salt Lake. All planes were grounded by fog and sleet. But today, as our story continues, a strange figure hurtles through space, red cape streaming in the whistling wind. Superman speeds to his assignment. 24 hours to go. The Silver Clipper leaves Denver tomorrow night on her way to Salt Lake City. That man who calls himself the Wolf, have to find out who he is, too. Said the train would never get there. We'll see, Wolf. We'll see. If you're up to something, look out. Because the other side has Superman. And as Superman wings his way westward, following the faint steel ribbon of the railway line below him, two men sit waiting in a tiny shack in the Colorado foothills. One of them is Keno Carter, gunman, gambler, Bad man of the Southwest. Kino waits nervously. Wait for some word from the figure across the table. The dark, shadowy figure who calls himself the Wolf. Hey, listen, boss. Will you please tell me what we're doing out here now? The Silver Clipper ain't due till tomorrow. Don't even leave Denver till tomorrow afternoon. Very true, Kino. But the Western Limited is due in exactly ten minutes. Well, what? Uh, what are you going to do with the Limited? I warned various people and newspapers that something would happen to the Silver Clipper tomorrow night. As it will. So far, they've chosen to ignore me. Very well. When they see what overtakes the Limited in slightly less than ten minutes, they will pay more attention to me when I call again. Now listen, boss. What is this, a game? What are you trying to do? Why ask me, Kino? Do I know any more than you? We're told to paralyze the railroads. That's all. But it's enough. We obey orders. Well, whose orders? Where did they come from? Yours come from me. And you know what happens, Kino, if you disregard them. Shall I tell you again? Uh, No, no, never mind. Very well. Come outside. Ah, Not long to wait now. If the Limited is on time, we should begin to hear her. I don't hear nothing. Ah, she is on time. Have you done what I told you? Yeah, I done it. But I don't see... You will see, Kino, very shortly indeed. Hey, what are you trying to do? Scare him to death? Listen now to what I tell you. I'm listening. That train will be going over that trestle down there in another seven or eight minutes. So what? At the end of the trestle, as you can see, Kino, the track turns and runs along the cliff on the mountainside. Yeah, I see. The mountains to one side, very steep and abrupt, then the track, then the canyon, 300 feet deep. Hey, listen. You gonna throw him down the canyon... The whole ten cars? As I said before, all you have to do is obey orders. All right. What do I do? You wait till the train has crossed the trestle, then you fire the charge. Right away? Count ten, if you like. All right. And then what? Then events will take their natural course. After which, you will come back and join me in the cabin. Hey, she's coming. I'm coming fast. Keep moving, my friend. Let her cross the trestle. Then count ten. Ah, good. Still following the railway. Ought to be getting fairly close to Denver. Looks like a long trestle up ahead. I'd get aboard that train if it weren't so slow. I'll drop down a bit and look it over. Might do it anyway. Ride in as Clark Kent. What's that man on the side of the mountain doing? 
Looks like he's got a charging battery for dynamite blasting. Something queer about that. Seems to be waiting. He's waiting for the train. Going to blast it right off the tracks. This looks like some of your dirty work, Wolf. Well, here's where Superman takes a hand. I've got to stop that train. I'll get aboard and they'll stop to put me off because I have no ticket. But it's got to be fast. 90 miles an hour. Good speed for a train, but it can't leave Superman behind. Ah, there's the observation platform. And what luck. Nobody on it. Now then. Grab the platform rail. There. Leap on board. Now. Now to join the passengers is Clark Kent. Cub reporter for the Daily Planet. Off for the cape. Into ordinary clothes. And inside. Tickets, please. All tickets. Tickets, press the Pablo. All tickets, please. Tickets, please. May I have your ticket, please? Oh, I... I'm sorry, conductor, but I have lost it. No, you've lost it. And I'm afraid that I'll have to ask you to pay the fare. Now, you know, I, I'm terribly sorry, but I seem to have lost my money, too. Uh, I thought so. You've been riding the blinds and figured you'd sneak in here where it's warm. Well, we know how to deal with bums like you. Yes, that's right, conductor. Stop the train and put me off. I don't mind. Huh? Say, who are you? Uh, Clark Kent, reporter for the Daily Planet. But that, that's all right. I, I, I ought to be more careful. Teach me a good lesson. Well, I guess I'll take a chance if you're really a reporter. Well, you're liable to write up a story about getting kicked off our train. You can stay where you are. But look here. Well, I'll take I... care of you when we get to town. And if you're not a reporter... Oh, no good. I overplayed it. Wait, Scott, I've got to do something. And quick, too. We're on the trestle. Where's that emergency cord? Hey, hey, what's going on here? Who pulled that cord? I... I did, Conductor. I, I'm terribly sorry. Sorry? Well, you better be sorry. Here, here. Come back here. Come I, back I, here. I can't stay, Conductor. My conscience bothers me. I'll just jump off right where we are on the trestle. You here. come back here. Oh, I, I'll be all right. Don't, don't worry about me. Uh, I got you. No, but, you no. can't get away this time. Now, you stay right here. I, I want to get well, off. Well, you I... ain't getting off. You'll go to jail for this. You come back up them steps. Look. Up the mountain, Conductor. That flash. Hey, what, what the... What the... Where was going on up there? It was a blast. An explosion up the mountain. Great Scott, Conductor, look, look what's coming. Oh, Lord save us, it's a rock slide. Tons of rock coming down on the track. Listen to it. And right ahead of us, too. Took the tracks out like two pieces of string. Oh, Lord. And now they're all coming out to find out what happened. It's all right. It's all right, ladies and gentlemen, no danger. Just a rock slide up ahead. That's all. There may be a slight delay. Delay? You don't think you can dig through that, do you? Now get back in the train, please. Get back. It's dangerous out here. Back on board, please. We may be held up a little while. Back on board, everybody, please. We'll be pulling out directly. Now then, Conductor, I I think you owe me a vote of thanks. No, oh, you do, do you? Well, what makes you think that? Well, use your eyes, man. Where would you be now if I hadn't stopped the train? Huh? Well, now, there may be something in what you say. I'm not denying if we'd been going our regular speed, we'd have got that rock slide right about the third car. I'll say you would. You'd have been down in that canyon, too. And it's 300 feet deep. As a matter of fact, that's where you were intended to be. Oh, is it? Well, what makes you think so? Goodbye, Conductor. I'll see you later. Hey, you come back here. Catch that guy. Joe, Mike, don't let him get away from the dog. Where'd he go? Catch him. Catch him, man. Get a hold of the boy. Twenty tons of rock. Why, that's nothing. Hardly a workout. Anything to put a crimp in the wolf's plans... And Clark Kent, reporter, simply must be in Denver by morning. First of all, down into the canyon for the missing rails. There they are. Now, back to the roadbed. I never swept up a rock slide before, but there's nothing like trying. Here we go. <laughs> Why, it's nothing. I'll have the line clear before that conductor knows I've gone. The Limited will be in Denver in an hour. Well, Kino, all done? What happened? No, nothing happened. Nothing happened? What do you mean? Oh, one of them things, boss. The train stopped on the trestle. Stopped? That train never stops. Well, it stopped this time. 
And the guy got out, and I didn't know, so I shot the stuff. Yes, yes, I heard it. Well, didn't you come out to look? I thought I'd better stay hidden. Well, there was a rock slide, and that's all. The train wasn't scratched. The line's blocked, but the train ain't hurt. This man who got out, who was he? After the slide, I snuck down and joined the mob, see? I heard him talking about a newspaper guy and looking for him. The name of Clark Kent. Kent? I don't know him. Well, you better, because he knows us. What's that? I don't know. All I can tell you is they're looking for him. Clark Kent, a newspaper man, who knew enough to stop that train. Well, we shall look for him too, my friend. Uh, we'll have lots of time. They won't get the line clear this side of Sunday. We shall look for this Mr. Kent, and when we find him... Ki- ah, the train. They've decided to go back to Pueblo. Let's look. Makino. Makino, that train. What? It's going west. Why, it can't be. Hey, well, what the... But it is. It's on its way to Denver. Why, it can't be. Why, there was 20 tons of rock on the line. Look for yourself, Kino. It's not possible. It's not human. But look. Well, very well. We go to Denver too, Kino, at once to find out what goes on and to take care of Mr. Kent, the newspaper man. Get the plane ready. Less than 24 hours to solve the plot and save the Silver Clipper. But now the wolf is hard on Clark Kent's trail. What happens in Denver when daylight comes? When Clark Kent breaks the story and when the wolf meets Superman? Tune in and don't miss it. And remember, be with us again for the next thrilling installment of Superman. Up in the sky. Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Clark Kent captured by the Wolf aired first on February 19, 1940. Presenting Superman. Up in the sky. Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And now, Superman. When we last left Superman, he had arrived in Denver as Clark Kent, news reporter, to investigate a strange and deadly plot against the railroads of the West. He had been able to prevent the Continental Limited from being swept into a canyon by a rock slide. But now the unknown force is directed against the Silver Clipper, crack train of the West Coast Railway. Mysterious messages have warned that the Clipper, due to leave Denver at sundown, will never arrive in Salt Lake City. Morning newspapers have carried Kent's story of the rock slide. And while railroad officials and government men search desperately for clues, Kent himself walks briskly toward the great central station for a conference with the division superintendent. But meanwhile... The plot moves on. In a secret hiding place overlooking the railroad yard, the man called the Wolf talks with his subordinate, Kino. Listen. So, very fine. At last, the unbelieving fools begin to take me seriously. You have read the stories, Kino? I read them. Well, why so sullen? Well, I don't understand it. I tell you, that track was blocked for a hundred feet. And yet five minutes later, the Continental went right on through. Next time, my friend, please to observe more accurately. Obviously, the track was not blocked for a hundred feet. It was not blocked at all. But I tell you it was. You should join forces with the conductor of the train. He swears that a tremendous figure in blue tights and a red cape appeared from nowhere, replaced the missing rails, cleared away 20 tons of rock, and made a safe passage for the train, all in a matter of minutes. Oh, yes, yes. And uh, he is now confined in the city hospital, that conductor, for observation. Yeah. Well, uh, I tell you, I've seen the same thing myself. That will do, my friend. We have no time for pipe dreams. You were deceived by shadows. And now listen, there's work to do. I'm listening. I note that this story is signed by that newspaper man, Clark Kent, the one who was on the train. Well, I told you about him. I should like to be better informed. That fellow seems to know a great deal. How he knows, I have no idea. But he does. Also, I have checked up on him. 
he was assigned to cover the story back east and seems to have arrived out here incredibly soon. Must have flown. Undoubtedly. But that's neither here nor there. Do you know where he is now? I did what you told me. I trailed him. He left his hotel to go see the divisional superintendent of the railroad. Did he? How lucky. Lucky? We'll kill two birds with one stone. We've got them on the run. They're worried, Kino, and frightened. I hope you're right. They don't know which way to turn or what to believe. They'd like to keep the Silver Clipper in Denver tonight, but they don't dare. They don't dare, Kino. They can't admit they're terrified. And wait till they get my telegram. Telegram? Can you dress up like a messenger, Kino? Huh? Uniform and so on? Oh, sure. Excellent, excellent. You will put on your fake uniform and take this wire, also fake, to the superintendent. Now? At once. If you have luck, you'll find him with Mr. Clark Kent. You will also find, I think, that he is trying to locate a missing engine, Kino. Missing engine? Just so. If he finds it, I'll eat it. Huh? Uh, never mind. Get your uniform on, Kino. Deliver the telegram personally. And bring back as much of the conversation as you can. You understand? Now, now where's that conductor's story? Quite the funniest reading I've seen this week. A Superman, huh? <laughs> Appearing out of the night. Well, well. Hello. Yes, this is Superintendent speaking. What? Well, trace it again. Trace it from both ends of the line. Ah, oh, nuts. Don't tell me you can't find it. Do you think a locomotive and tender could vanish into thin air? Check every station master and call me back. I'm sorry, Mr. Kent. Oh, that's that's quite all right. Stupid idiots. Look here, we sent a spare engine and tender down the line last night, and now they can't tell me where it is. What? On the main line? Certainly. And uh, never mind. Let's get back to this business, the Continental. Any more news of that conductor? No, not so far. Poor fellow's out of his mind. Hmm. What do you suppose he thought he saw? All that business about a superman. Yes, I only wish to heaven they'd never printed it. Well, I didn't report that, believe me. No, I know. And now look here, Kent. I've checked with your paper back east, and they tell me that it's all right, and that you're here to do what you can. Now, what do you want to know? Well, first of all, have you any idea what's back of this trouble on the railroads? Not the slightest. If you ask me, there's a lunatic at large. Oh, don't you believe it. Well, what else can I believe? It's too senseless, utterly mad. Well, you had warnings. Yes, which we ignored. Uh, we get them all the time from cranks and nuts. But these warnings came true. And so what of it? Well, do you still think they came from cranks and nuts? All right, Kent. What do you think? I think that one man or a group of men is trying to paralyze the country with fear. Yes, but why? I'm afraid we'll find that out later. Unless we can stop them. Good Lord, we've got to stop them. This can't go on, Kent. We'll do what we can. What do you suggest? I suggest that you don't let the Silver Clipper leave Denver tonight. Oh, Kent, she's got to leave. Can you imagine what the reaction would be if she didn't? You're taking a chance. Yeah, I can't help that. She's got to go. Well, then we must work fast. We only have until this evening. I have one more idea. Yes, what is it? Well, if you read my story carefully, you'll see that I imply I know more than I printed. Yes, I did notice that. Well, do you? Not yet, but I expect to. How? The people back of this, particularly the man called the Wolf, will want to know just what I do know and where I got it. Well? I propose to show myself around until he catches up with me. Will he? I think so. I was shadowed this morning on my way here. Good Lord. You were? So I think he and his friends are just waiting their chance. And I'm going to give it to them. Oh, Kent, don't do it. Why, if they'd wreck a train where they wouldn't think twice about... <laughs> about putting me out of the way? Yes. Don't worry. But why? What's the idea? While they're finding out how much I know, I may be finding out one or two little items about them. Well, I only hope... Here. How long have you been standing there, messenger? Oh, I just come, boss. You the divisional superintendent? Uh, telegram? Yes, sir. Uh, for you personally. They told me to bring it right in. I seen the door was open, well, so I, I walked... hope they found that engine. Well? That's all, messenger. Get out. Uh, yes, sir. No, wait. Hey, where'd you get this wire, huh? Why, the, the office gave it to me. Said to bring it right over. All right, all right. Go on. Close the door behind you. Hey, Kent, listen to this. Yes? 
Where an engine is now, a train will be tomorrow. The silver clipper will vanish like smoke, never to be seen by the eyes of living men. Well, well, sounds like black magic. I don't believe it. Why, they'd never dare. Oh, they'd dare, all right. Is that telegram signed? Uh, yes. It's signed The Wolf. The Wolf? Look here, Mr. Superintendent. Yes? That settles it. Have that wire checked. Find out who sent it and when and from where, if you can. My guess is you'll discover it's faked. I wish we'd held that messenger. Well, Kemp, what are you going to do? Just what I said I'd do. Put myself in the hands of the wolf and see who wins. Superintendent speaking. What? What? Why, look here, that's not possible. It can't be. A man alive, think what you're saying. Now, look here, you tell that rude to report here in my office. That's right at once. My God, please, I bet I'll find out something. Anything new? Why, it's the silliest thing I ever heard. Wait, that telegram. Where an engine is now. I don't believe it. I don't believe it for a minute. What is it? Kent, that locomotive in tender. It passed through Kingston at 11.15. Yes? And it passed through Richville at 11.50. Well? It should have reached Lewisburg at 12.20, just 30 minutes later. And it didn't? It wasn't on time? On time? I had never got there at all. Oh, well, that's easy. It left the rail somewhere in between. Yes, you'd think so. But listen to this. A crew left Richville and a crew left Lewisburg. They met somewhere in between just now in broad daylight. And neither crew had seen a sign of that engine anywhere. That's not possible. No. No, it isn't, is it? Black magic. Isn't that what you called it, Kent? I think I'm going mad like that conductor. Well, what are you going to do? Do? I'm going out to hunt wolves. Anybody looking? No. Quick. Out of these clothes. Now, that window. Goodbye to Clark Kent temporarily. It's Superman's turn now to find out where those devils are hiding and to listen while they tell me what they know. Up, up, over the yards. Circle around a bit. Ha! Ah, there goes that messenger. Watch him, watch him. I land on that roof. Look down into the street. There he goes. The messenger. Into that house with the broken railing. Now then, I think I'll become Clark Kent again. Respectable representative of the Daily Planet. I'll just walk casually down that street and see what happens. Down we go. So, he thinks he'll find out one or two little items about us, huh, Kino? Yeah, that's what he said before they saw me standing there. I think I should like to question that young man on various angles of the... So interesting story he wrote for this morning's paper. What are you doing by the window? Hey, hey, down there, down there in the street, look. Huh? What is it? It's him, walking right up to the house. What? That? Is that Clark Kent? How did he know where to find me? Who told him? I don't know. Hey, don't look at me like How that. How did he know which way to take to get here? He searched me, boss. He knows too much. How does he know? Quick, Kino, downstairs. Hey, boss, what are you going to do with him? There's a vault below us, Kino. Steel lined and soundproof, with various devices to bring out information. You're going to take them there? For a time, for a little conversation, my friend. Stop, stop. Look to the people. Is he coming? Here, yeah, right this way. Hey, wait a minute. Is anyone else in the alley? No, it's empty. Here he comes. We'll jump out and grab him, huh? All right, be ready with your blackjack. Now. Hey, where are you going? Quick, quick, you know, let him have it. Here, what's hey, the big hey, idea? Hey, what hey, the... Come, go on, jump, boss. Inside, inside with him, quick. Come on, you. No hanging back. <laughs> Ah, good work, Kino. Good work down the iron stairway. Quick, quick. Someone may have heard us. Oh, he's trying to hang back out. Fix him. There we are. Shove him inside. Ah, now, close the door. Now then, Mr. Clark Kent, the time has come for a little talk. Kino, my friend, you may prepare the aids to conversation. Clark Kent and the power of the wolf. Or is the wolf all unknowing? In the power of Superman. And meanwhile, where is the missing engine? Excitement, thrills, suspense. Tune in and follow the story. And remember, be with us again for the next thrilling installment of Superman. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. You have been listening to The Adventures of Superman. If you need more old-time radio, 
please consider visiting crypticescape.com. You may also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and there is much more on our YouTube channel. Thank you for listening. And remember there is a superhero in all of us, we just need the courage to put on the cape. Superman. The Adventures of Superman is public domain. The Cryptic Escape Podcast is copyright CE Publications 2020. This has been a Cryptic Escape presentation.